Hey, this is Mike. I am visiting East Coast Volkswagen and they are letting me show off this awesome car. It's a 2015 Volkswagen Jetta TDI SE. And what's so special, one of the main things that's special about this vehicle is that it has a small 2.0 liter diesel engine that gets 45 miles per gallon on the highway. I mean, it's seriously awesome gas mileage. And the, the engine, I don't know if you can tell, it's not very, it doesn't sound like a diesel at all. To me, I mean, you can't really tell that it's actually a diesel. It's not like a, uh, like any other vehicle. Uh, sounds like just any other vehicle that you would hear. But anyway, we'll check out the engine and all that stuff in just a few minutes. But let's go ahead and take a look at the overall look of the car. Pretty much a standard four-door sedan style car with the aluminum wheels and the four-wheel disc brakes. And then here in the front you have the running the running lights, daytime running lights with the halogen reflector headlights nice classy looking car it's not a real big car but it's not real tiny either it's a really good in-between size that um, I think will work for a lot of people I guess that's why they, they make this style, this size vehicle, that's kind of like most common. But let's go ahead and check it out, start checking out the inside, starting with the passenger side. And it has a, like a, I don't know how to explain it, that's, that's not really white, it's more like a real light tan color. And then you have a, a black or a real dark gray mixture, plus you have this accent, like this brushed metallic accents here around the vehicle and you have a pocket with a place to put a bottle you know like a water bottle or something like that manual adjustments on the seats here and the seats are really nice looking they're heated it says leather et so i'm not sure if that means that it's like full leather part leather i'm not really sure how to interpret that but it says leather at seats with the perforations there and some stitching very comfortable has really good bolsters without being too ridiculous uh, on the on the bolstering it's just a good mixture of hugging your body without you know and being too intrusive there's the glove compartment and the glove compartment has these little places to put change a place to put a pen that kind of stuff even a credit card it looks like this slides right in here Plenty of leg room. Now that seat's all the way back, so we can get an idea of what the back seats look like. All right, let's take a look here at the back. I folded the seat down a little bit so you can see that they do fold down so you can increase your cargo capacity. And the opening here is very substantial, um, especially considering it's a 60-40 split and you can have just one side, like this side right here is pretty good amount of room, so you can put like a big box in there and you still have a passenger on the other side. Alright, so there's your leg room here in the back, and like I said, that seat's all the way back. So, you know, you have a pretty substantial leg room, considering not everybody has the front seat all the way back. You do have some slight bolstering on the back seat, but not quite as aggressive as the front, because you want to be able to slide in and out of the bench seat, especially for the center passenger. If you don't have a center passenger, you can fold this down and you have an armrest and cup holders and then a little place there to access the trunk. We have a power supply and some little pockets here for the back seat drivers, a place to put their phone or something like that. Here's the fuel door. It says diesel only. And I'm not going to open up the cap, 
uh, since it's running. But when you take the cap off, there's this little stud at the end will fit in this little hole. And that way you have a place to put your your cap when uh, you're putting your fuel in. And you know, and that way it's not dangling down on this, this plastic string and scratching your paint or anything. And it's a good good design, I think. All right, so let's take a look at the trunk. Now there's this little latch here. <clears throat> Just under here to the left of the back of the camera, there's a little a button. And you can see it has a pretty decent trunk size. And, you know, of course, you could put the seats down if you need more, more room. Here's the latches to put the seats down here. And underneath this is your spare tire, which not all new cars have a spare tire, so you want to uh, check into that. When you're looking at new cars, make sure it actually does have a spare tire. To actually look at the spare tire, see where it is. You don't want to find out that you don't have a spare tire at the wrong time. Take a look at the window stickers real quick. Of course, you can use the pause button if you want to look at it in more detail. But look at that, 45 on the highway. That's amazing. Okay, so let's take a look at that diesel engine. To open the hood, there's a little latch right here just behind the Volkswagen symbol in this little part. Just lift it up a little bit to the right, right here. Well, it's covered up mostly with plastic. Batteries insulated. But there is a turbo somewhere. Oh, there it is, there in the back. But yeah, pretty smooth running engine. I mean, I've, a lot of gas engines are louder than this one. All right, it is a direct injection turbocharged engine. That's what the whole TDI stands for. All right, so Let's take a, more, a little bit more detailed look into the driver's point of view. All right, here we are behind the wheel. So we can take a look at everything. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and, I'm gonna show you the key real fast. Um, so here's the key and Basically, you, as long as it's in the vehicle, you don't actually have to, you know, open up the little switch blade thing and start the car. You can actually just push a button. So there's the button there, and I want to go ahead and turn it off so you can see the procedure on starting it up. So as long as you have this key in the vehicle, uh, you just have you just get in here, put your foot on the brake, and push and hold the start button. starts right up okay so let's go ahead and move on to the driver's door so it has a couple buttons here um, right off the bat it has your window controls and you can lock out your window your other windows uh, if you want to like if you don't want kids rolling up and down the window you can lock them out if you want uh, there's a switch there for opening the trunk and up here is your door lock controls and then your side mirror controls um, as far as adjusting them you just have to choose left or right and then you, this acts like a little joystick to adjust it and then the center position is no adjustment at all so uh, once you get them adjusted um, you can you know if accidentally move that it's not going to mess up your mirrors so here's the headlight control and I like the way it's just real simple it's just on or off <laughs> You don't have to, you know, worry about all these different settings. There's your dimmer switch for, uh, dim, you know, making the interior dash lights brighter or dimmer. And 
we'll go ahead and show you it is a tilt and telescoping steering column. You just lock it back in place like that. So the steering wheel is a leather wrapped, tight leather wrapped steering wheel and it has, it's not quite, a, it has a flat bottom here but it's not exactly round all the way around. It has a round surface back here but this side is a little bit sharper. Um, it is round but it's not quite as perfectly circle-ish <laughs> if that's a word. So it has like a little bit of a interesting grip. Um, and it's not bad, it's just a little bit different than you know what you would expect in just a any other car. But uh, I guess it's a little bit sportier. Uh, it does have these sharp little bolsters there and it gives you that lateral control. And the black, the shiny black is really pops out, makes it classy looking. So let's go ahead and look over here on this side. Uh, this is your cruise control, and you just have to make sure it's turned on with this button, on or off, and it will let you know here on the on the dash if it's on. And then once it's on, you can set it. Uh, you can adjust your speed, you know, plus or minus. You can resume, and then you can cancel. So those are the main features there. This is a volume for your radio, so you just get louder if you want to do that. Okay, so on this side of the steering wheel, we have some buttons, and they're kind of, uh, some of them correspond to this screen, some of them cor correspond with that screen. So this right and left button will change you through, uh, like, presets and stuff on the radio, or different tracks on the CD or something like that. But these up and down buttons and these buttons correspond with this screen. So I'm going to just kind of scroll through so you can see miles um, to empty, uh, 35 miles on the vehicle, uh, average like miles per hour, current miles per hour, stuff like that, outside temperature, and a, you know, just a clock. So, and also if you get into a particular screen, like say this trip, uh, you can push this right and left and choose, uh, you know, different things in, in that particular screen. So like that's a trip one and trip two. Um, so you can go up and down, you can go left and right. Now these other buttons here correspond to the, a third thing and that is your, uh, your phone. So when you have a Bluetooth phone paired with the system, you can answer calls with this button. You can make calls, you can act, ha answer and hang up on calls. So like say if somebody calls you, you can push that button and answer it. But then when you're finished with the call, you push it again to hang up. If you want to make a call, you see this little, it looks like a little uh, person speaking. When you push that, it has a voice recognition system that will uh, recognize what you say. So if you say call John Smith and you have a John Smith in your phone book on your phone and everything's saved, um, then it'll actually call that person. <clears throat> you can also say call, you know, whatever the number is. And it does a pretty good job of recognizing your voice and it also will, you know, kind of adapt itself to more, the more you speak to it, the more it gets used to your voice. So that's a good thing. And it's a really good safety feature because you have your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, and you're staying productive, making and receiving phone calls. Very awesome. So, you know, this is, this side is a little bit, le a little bit more involved as far as what it does. But once you get used to it, it's, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's just a matter of getting used to it, especially if you drive the car every day. Okay, so on this side is just your turn signal and, you know, have your high beams and low beams. That side is just for your uh, windshield wipers. So let's look at the gauges again. Real simple, easy to read. The black background, the white lettering popping out. It's classy, it's simple, and it's very uh, easy. Like I said, easy to read, I guess you could say. So the RPMs there on the left miles per hour there on the right and it says 160 miles an hour that's amazing so you have that center screen and you know you saw some of the different information that it has on it but uh, your gas gauge is there at the very bottom and you notice the arrow <clears throat> next to the little pump is aiming to the right that's showing you which side your fuel door door is on and then up here you have a clock and then a you know what gear you're in so right now it's in park 
All right. Now, if you need to set the clock, you can set it with this button over here. If you don't want to reset your trip, you set it with that button. Okay, so let's take a look over here. This is your touchscreen. And, you know, it has the ability, it's got the AM, FM, satellite radio, uh, media. There's lots of different media inputs. One, one of the media inputs would be the SD card right here. You can put hundreds or thousands of songs on it. Plug it in there and you're good, good to go for forever, basically. Also, you can play music through a Bluetooth phone or your CD. And, you know, you can actually plug in iPod if you really wanted to. And there's an auxiliary input as well, which we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, your phone, this is where you would pair it. But once it's paired, you would actually have a screen there that has the numbers showing, um, you know, like a keypad and all that stuff and access to your, your phone book. And you can set up all that stuff in your setup screen. You set change the display, um, you know, adjust your, you know, pair of telephones. You do have the volume and the tune of the stations, pretty standard there. And so down here is your climate control. Heated seats here in the front. They are a three stage. You just keep pushing it and it'll cycle through the different stages. And then um, temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow. Pretty simple there. Recirculate the air. All right. And then down here is your auxiliary input, a power supply, 12 volt, plus a convenient pocket back in there. And there's your start button, which we saw before. And so here's your shifter. So let me go ahead and shift it in reverse so we can see what the backup camera looks like. So the backup camera is a wide angle view. You can see it's it's very stretched out. The, the horizon is, you know, very curved. So it distorts the image a little bit and to kind of correct for that, it gives you these yellow guidelines. And don't confuse those with the white lines. Those are actually on the pavement uh, in the parking lot. But those yellow guidelines give you a an estimated trajectory estimated trajectory of the car. Uh, also, it will give you the um, distance. So, like say, you see that yellow line? You don't want to get any closer than that yellow line because that's literally just a few inches away from the car. It looks like it's more room than what it actually is. So, the closer you get, the more distance you think you might have because of the distortion from the lens. The main thing of the backup camera is to show you what's behind you. Uh, the distances are a little bit off just because of the nature of the wide angle lens. So have, just pay attention to the lines. You know, you don't want to get any, any closer. That's like maximum that yellow line right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the shifter down in neutral and then drive. And then if you want the best performance you could possibly get out of the vehicle you go down into sport mode and sport mode you're just telling the vehicle that you want the highest performance you can get out of the vehicle uh, you don't really care about the fuel economy but if you want to actually have control over the shift points in the transmission you just slide this over to the right and you can cycle up and down through the different gear ratios just sort of like an old ratchet shifter ratchet shifter so that's handy if you're, you know, especially if you're going downhill and you need some engine braking, um, you can actually change the gears. There's your parking brake. Here's cup holders with little spring-loaded things here that take out the slack for different size cups. So here's an armrest, and it kind of slides forward and back, whatever you know, whatever is convenient for you. And it also lifts up. And there's a there's a special adapter for this um, for different inputs like your iPod and stuff and it, the car does come with one so you can you know play all kinds of different music off of an iPod in the system there and then you have a storage pocket there up here pretty much standard um, flippy thing here at the bottom for your day and night mode for your rear view mirror you do have some tap lights, which will give you a quick access reading light. Now, if you want to turn all the lights on, you just push that button there. Uh, this has 
three different positions. One is to have the lights on. The center position is for when the door opens, the lights turn on. Or you can have it completely off. Even when the door is open, the lights will not turn on. All right, this is for your uh, sunroof, which I'll show you that in a second. And these buttons actually will dial out and actually call people, so I'm not going to push them. But, you know, emergency, roadside assistance, information, stuff like that is what that will provide. And this is a place to put your shades. Okay, so it's sunroof time. And you notice it has this dial. So, I'm going to go ahead and open the shade. It has a pretty neat shade that blocks out 100% of the light. So now it's open. So all i got to do is push up on it to open up the, um, the actual sunroof, uh, like tilt it. But if I want it back, I just turn the dial. And then I can close it like that. Okay, so let me show you again. Push it up, tilt it, pull it down, tilt, tilt it down, turn the dial to actually open it. Turn it back to close it. And at any time, you don't want to have some sun in your face or whatever, you can close the shade. Also, on the visors, you have mirrors with little lights that turn on right above them when you open up the mirror. Let's take a look at the visibility back here. Okay, so now it's your turn. Tell me what you think of this car. If, if you've ever had experience, do you, maybe you drive one of these or you've test driven one, you're thinking about buying one, uh, you considered one, anything like that, go ahead and leave it in the comments what you think about the car, uh, what your experience is, because this is you know an information video. Hopefully it will help other people. So if you can put in your inf your experience with a vehicle like this, um, it will help other people. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. And thank you to East Coast Volkswagen for allowing me to show off this awesome car. And I'll see you next time.